Hello everybody and welcome again to Battle for Azeroth. It's been a while since I made a video, but things keep changing, resulting in me delaying things a little bit. So I figured I'd just let things settle back down a bit before deciding to actually record another video. Now things have settled down a little bit. There's still a couple of changes to come, such as Moonkins getting big buffs, uh, the Death Knight rework still on the table. But as for everything else, it seems like it's sort of falling into place a little bit. So I figured now would be the time to go do a dungeon and actually record. So what am I recording? I'm recording a arms warrior in the Shrine of the Storm. Definitely wanted to make sure I didn't record Ataldazar again because it's the most frequent one that always pops up because, well, when you're hard and all the low level dungeons come into play, it comes up quite frequently as one that people tend to queue for. But we're not going to there. No, no, no. We're in the Shrine of the Storm. And it's a good dungeon this. I really like it. I did do a video of uh, my priest in this place. Went a little bit ar awry at times, but um, it's okay. And the reason that you want to be a bit more careful in this dungeon is because, as you can probably tell, there is a lot of casters. A lot of casters. A lot of them. And they've got really important spells that you need to watch out for. Wash away, this one that keeps getting spammed here, is just a swelly on the floor that you've got to move out of. It's nothing too serious. But the more serious ones are about to come up. Depending on especially how we pull here. So we actually have pulled in the worst possible way imaginably here, so... You see these t Shrine Templars? They are always your first target. This is unavoidable, don't worry about this. Because they've got a 50% damage reduction aura to everyone around them, but it doesn't apply to themselves. So if you can get that out of the way pretty damn fast, it's going to put you in for a pretty good time. Or at least it's going to help you out a lot. So he's nearly dead. Finish him off. Execute. Let's execute this one. And we'll go for the caster next. The big guy, he's not really all that threatening. All he really does is this. But the temple attendants are the ones that are doing wash away, which is the swirly that knocks you around. So, I mean, you can let it get through and just move out of it. That's always an option. And now we'll just eventually kill this guy. I mean, I say he's not that threatening. He may hit the tank quite hard. I, I can't honestly remember. He's nearly in execute phase. There he goes. And now we finish him off. And move on to these ones. So now these mobs are the ones that are a bit more problematic. We've got Anchor of Binding, which again is a swirly on the floor. But if you get caught in it, you get rooted as well as taking a chunk ch of damage. But one of the main things that you've got to watch out for is Mending Rapids, like this one here. I can't actually stop that one, because my user wasn't ready, but I can stun that one. And we can... I wish I had Sweeping Strikes ready, but it's just a few seconds off. There we go, now we can do a really strong two-target cleave, just as it all dies, but I mean, hey, oh, there you go. Just uh, pull all this crap here, and I'm actually going to pull this here for our uh, tank friend, because it's going to be a lot better if we do this. Now we stop, drop the big bad blade storm. Tempest is a... Um, how can I describe this? It's like a projectile, you can see them little tornadoes going across. But it's really dangerous. It's really dangerous. There's a lot of damage. The reason I pulled these is because, as in the priest video, they can pull with the boss, which is a nightmare. So now we don't have any chance of pulling them with the boss, therefore it makes the boss that much easier. Or rather, just as the boss should be, because you're not meant to have extra things with the boss. You can still pull the mini boss potentially, but I think I've removed that chance by getting rid of that particular pack. Okay, let's pop Avatar, let's charge in. Nope, charge is just a couple of seconds off cooldown, but I don't have... Yeah, it's not a big deal, I've got tons of rage. Bring the Colossus Smash. Okay, so Choking Brine is just a debuff. You can see it's on the Hunter, not getting... Uh, it, I was about to say it's not getting dispelled, but it just got dispelled. Surging Rush is a charge, so just don't be good where he's facing. Grasp from the Deeps. He's going to root me. Pity I've uh, already used Avatar. There we go, it got dispelled. Nice. It might have been actually damaged off me, I'm not entirely certain. Undertow is this beam that he shoots out at somebody, and it's like a pushback, so you just fight the pushback. Nothing too serious there. Choking Brine. Did that go on the pet? Oh no, that's the name of the rogue. For some reason I thought it was a, a pet name. Watch out for the rush. Charge across. 
He's gonna go into his like submerged phase in a moment. Okay, here he goes, splits into three. And all of the um, three of them all have the same abilities. So this is where things can get a little bit hairy. Especially when you get multiple people with Choke and Bright, and that really does suck. I'm hoping that when they do their rush attack, surging rush, they all end up in a similar place. Because then I can blade storm. Oh. Oh, I'm getting... See, I'm, like, really, really nastily pushed back here. Blades down then to get a little bit of damage. Less than I wanted because of the pushback. I couldn't get there quite in time. But it's okay. See the uh, tentacles coming out there. So you don't want to have them living for too long. And this little purple swirly on the floor is where the boss will resubmerge. He comes out in execute phase. So we spam our execute button. And then he's dead. Didn't get the ring that I wanted from this boss, sadly. Okay, now for the mini boss. Mini boss puts a rune on the floor. Let's so activate sweeping strikes, interrupt the bats. Sweeping strikes is really good for, with Colossus Smash, by the way, because what it allows you to do is Colossus Smash two targets at the same time. So minus swiftness ward, you can't really see it that well. But it gives um, gives a shit ton of haste. It doesn't show up, but you can see my haste went up to 46%. It's usually 8 because my gear is shit at this point. Which feels really bad. Really bad. But the idea is you move hair out of it. I can't interrupt that. You move hair out of it. And everyone else stands in it to get a mini bloodlust sort of effect. Just trying to... Well, wind there, see if I was in range just to get the damage off. Uh, let's blade storm, since there's a lot more mobs coming in. Should help out a ton. And she's in execute first, so let's just execute, 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 and run out the circle and charge back in and finish her. Yes. Arms Warrior is feeling good. Yeah, it really is. I am a big fan of this spec and in its current iteration. Whether it's better or worse than the Legion version, I don't know because I don't play Arms Warrior in Legion. However, as it is currently, I am loving this spec quite a lot. It feels so dynamic and it's got a lot of different ways of doing damage, it feels like. The only issue I have had so far is it's a little bit, just a little bit uh, rage starved, but that's more because of my awful uh, haste values, I imagine. Uh, a lot more stuff now, so let's start doing cleaves and whirlwinds. Now you can see this on the floor. This is the rune for this next mini boss, Rune Carbasson. He's very important in um, in this rune that he does. You've got to be really careful. So you've got to move him out of it first off, because he's taking 75% less damage, which is obviously garbage, especially when I just happens to pop my cooldowns. But you've got to stand in it. So now you can see he's casting Car Flesh on me. If I wasn't standing in this um, rune, I'd be dead. Because it takes so... It, it, it's insane how much damage it does. It truly is. So we've got all these mobs now. They're um, standing in this room, which again sucks. But I've got to stand in here just a little bit longer. Oh, God. These um, apprentices are really making things annoying here. Let's pop Avatar. I'm going to f focus on getting all these guys. Now they've gone into the rune again, motherfuckers. Like, pulling all these mobs it is a terrible, terrible idea. Well, actually, it's, it's not really. It's just these ones that do this AoE that force you to move because you always want to be in the rune. And you can't be in the rune because otherwise you're taking these massive slam things. Okay, we've got Car Flesh. It's not on me, so... You can see the rogue's health in the rare frame there. He's absolutely getting hammered. Gonna blade storm here. Try and finish these two bastards off. I'm not really sure what the tank's doing. He shouldn't be moving the way he is because this thing is still alive. Okay, he's putting another rune down. Pull him out of it. No, not that far. We need to use it. Oh, God. Now the rogue's gonna have to stand in that rune so he doesn't die. But he's so far away, which means he's not gonna be able to DPS at all. Alright, I'm gonna fear these fuckers. Again, he's casting Car Flesh. I'm focus trying to focus him down as much I as I can at this point because he's just so friggin' annoying. Jesus. 
Okay, it's on me now, but th thankfully the rune is right next to me. Uh, I'm not going to be able to move, but I can make use of the rune. Come on, finish this guy. There we go. Fucking hell. Move up the slam. I'll try to. Tank's really not making it easy for us. Execute that. Okay, that's one of them out of the way. Activate sweeping strikes with the Colossus Smash bonus, and that should be the end of these two. My god, that was harder than it needed to be. Apparently the rogue's saying you can uh, line of sight it, but the paladin's perfectly correct here. You meant to use the rune on the floor, but the tank just fucked us over, basically. The paladin is the tank as well, which makes it the uh, situation even more confusing. You can't use the rune if you run all the way away. So Electrifying Shock, this should be dispelled off me, hopefully it is, because it's done going to do a shit ton of damage in combine, combination with the Shit Grave and Storm. So I'm going to use Rallying Cry here. Just to make sure that everyone's got the health to stay alive. I hate these fucking Whirling Slams, man. They are night... Melly's worst nightmare. The place for a Blade Storm. Uh, I'm probably going to have to pop Die by the Sword on the next ship Shipbreaker Storm. Let's interrupt that. Yeah, Die by the Sword. Don't have a, a Victory Rush prop, unfortunately. I'm trying my hardest to kill this thing just for the Victory Rush. Okay, I've got Sweeping Strikes there, uh, Colossus Smash going on. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah, this tank is really bad in the fact that he is pulling too much shit. Way too much shit. The run back in here is a bit of a pain in the ass. Run. Yeah, this guy's got an ego. He's one of them typical tanks. Ah, oh, hate him. Hate him already. No, the, like, when there's that much damage going out, you can't say just target a different one. No, that's not how it works. You got us killed there. Don't even try and pretend that it's us. Uh, I could have waited for the res, but what the hell. Not a big deal. We're not going to be at the boss anytime soon. But I can talk about Arms Warrior a little bit more on the way back. So I keep talking about sweeping strikes. It's a 25 second cooldown and it makes all your abilities. I don't believe it works with your just basic attacks. But all your abilities hit an additional target within 8 yards for 100% of the damage. And it can apply um, debuffs such as a Colossus Smash and it can apply um, Deep Wounds from Mortal Strikes, Executes and all that sort of thing. Something that is really good to use it with is Execute itself because making Execute hit two targets is pretty awesome. I'm just going to finish this guy over here. Uh, okay, I'll Blade Storm. Blitzstorm is actually a single target DPS increase, I believe, because each tick applies uh, Deep Wounds, which is kind of huge, honestly. Deep Wounds is a lot of damage. I'll, um, I'll show the boss breakdown in a moment after we kill the next boss, because that'll be a bit more of an indication. I suppose I could mouse over now, actually. Uh, deep Wounds is my... There you go. Top damage. So, I'm... I don't want to use my cooldowns or anything just yet because this is just trash. Like, I know it's all, we, we just call it all trash by default, but like, this is trash trash, you know, it's just garbage. Just runs around doing nothing but melee hits and yeah, that's the end of it. So we want to, want to interrupt the Tempests obviously, but we don't want to go too ham using all our actual abilities. We're primarily using Cleave, Whirlwind and fill in the dead time with overpower, just to keep, make sure that when I go into the boss, I'll go in with full overpower stats. I believe Cleave is um, mathematically worth it on two targets, actually. But, can't be sure. Yes, I know. So these, them runes that we saw in the past, they are in use on the boss. Slicing Blast has to be interrupted a lot. Ah, oh, I should have... I should have used sweeping strikes there before the Colossus Smash I fucked up. So hindering clean, you've got to watch out for that as melee. But we're uh, trying to stick to this this boss over here as much as we can. 
I'll be able to interrupt the next one. Okay, Swiftness Ward's coming down. It's a lot more visible for the boss, so we can interrupt that and she'll run out of it. Then we want to kind of be in it ourselves, but I don't know, the distance is a bit, a bit off. Reinforcing Ward, so that's the big damage reduction one, so we definitely don't want the bosses in that. I'm going to Blade Storm here just because my Rage Generation's getting pretty crap. Okay, we've got Sweeping Strikes again. So we're Sweeping Strikes, Colossus Smash, that applies the debuff to both of them. Got hit there with uh, something pretty nasty. Interrupt that. Thankfully I'm a warrior so I can charge and get the distance closed nice and quick. Yeah, the tank needs to be a bit more careful with the... Um, that thing. The hindering cleave positioning. Okay, so I have ugh, a lot of shit on the floor there. Pretty nasty. Okay, so now we've got Sweeping Strikes back and Colossus Smash, so we'll use both of them together. And then we can cleave the other guy with Execute by hitting this bitch with Execute. So that's a, a nice damage increase there. And now we just need to go through the motions of moving this guy out the ward. The wards, I think it's this ward actually removes debuffs when you move into it, so if you've got a slur or anything like that, you can just pop inside and get rid of that. I'm not actually sure what this buff does for him. Physical damage dealt increase and reduces movement speed. So yeah, it's, it's just a standard, let's, you know... God, we've got extra things. Good time for a blade storm then. Um, yeah, it's just a c case of kite it a little bit. So now he's in execute phase, so we'll just keep on executing him. In cleave. Out of rage a little bit, so we'll throw a little overpower in there while we get a bit more back. And down he goes. And the boss over here is where the loot drops. I get some Azerite power, which is very small. So you remember back in Air Legion, like early Legion, there's a point where you could um, grind artifact power and it felt okay, and then suddenly the next one that you needed cost an absolute fortune. That happens around artifact power level, uh, sorry, Azerite power level 10-ish. My current Azerite is uh, sadly going up very slowly since I'm at 11 at the moment. And as mentioned in a previous video actually, I um, just want to stay in a little bit longer with this buff and then run out when it's about to end, which is about now, make sure it doesn't explode onto anyone. Then it gets instantly reapplied. Got the uh, Sweeping Strike Colossus Smash Execute combo going on there. These guys need to be mass dispelled on the pull, or if you don't have a priest, blood elf racial on the pull, because that gets rid of all of their shields. It's really strong. So we'll blade storm, and hope that the priest. There we go. Look how quickly they die when you actually mass dispel them. It's insane. So all those people that are complaining about blood elf racial, by the way, as I just mentioned, there's use for it here, and there's use for it in a lot of places. It's actually really freaking good. Like, seriously, I'm not even kidding. The new Blood Elf Racial isn't bad at all. I mean, it, obviously the AoE silence is more desirable, but that doesn't mean the new one's bad a bit. But I'm an Orc, so I don't have that option. But I do have Blood Fury, which, uh, thank God, it's not on the global cooldown anymore. Fuck me, that was horrible when that was the case. Jesus Christ. Having to pop Avatar and then Blood Fury, and then Colossus Smash. You wait in like four and a half seconds before I can actually really do damage. Man, it sucked. But it's not on the global cooldown anymore, but, so it's better, but half your abilities still are on the global, which obviously still sucks. So let's just keep eating strikes. Fucking love sweeping strikes, man. Particularly on two target fights, but we've got Blade Storm going here. When they cast that spell, it just like summons a bunch of tentacles that do... Uh, Various abilities. Stun that before it gets the cast off. So the the lash ability that these do, it's nothing major. It's just 1% um, increased damage taken debuff. It's really minor. Yeah, I'm not going to use my leap. You can mount up here. Which makes getting up here a lot faster. And we're going to be moving onwards to the entrance to the big kraken thing. It's big statue 
into the actual shrine itself. It's really cool little aesthetic. Okay, so we're going to get that combo that I keep going on about again. Sweeping strikes, Colossus Smash, and then I can hit both of these motherfuckers. Detect thoughts you definitely want to interrupt because it gives them a 100% chance to avoid all damage. Consuming Void's a bit annoying as well because it may takes damage take makes damage taken heal them, but it, the tooltip actually says spell damage, so I think as a warrior it's good enough for me. Interrupt that again. Should be using cleave here, actually, since there's three targets. Whenever you, whenever you use cleave, when this um, let's use the sweeping strikes again, of course. Whenever you cleave and there's three targets hit, it applies deep wounds to all the targets. But when it's only two targets, you don't get that bonus. So we'll get in here, we'll blade storm. So detect thoughts, you can see this look. Dodge, 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 dodge. That's gonna pipe here every time you don't interrupt that. So it's a bit of a bit of a bitch to do. Mental assault is a frontal. You can see which way this pacing, and then they do a stun. It's got sweeping strikes again. Gets the cleave and the whirlwinds. Uh trying to find one that doesn't have detect thoughts. Well kind of fucked. They all got it. Mental Assault is the stun again, so let's watch the way they're facing. Interrupt that bastard thing. Try and get a big cleave off. Sweeping Strikes is ready again, so we'll use that. We'll target this one because they got Detect Thoughts off again, so I don't want them dodging everything again. Try and keep going with the Whirlwinds and the Cleaves. Give me like a complete play by play of pretty much every button I'm pressing here. But I yeah, I like pressing the but buttons that ARMS has, honestly. It's, it's, I'm really enjoying the spec. Uh, between Unholy Death Knight and ARMS Warrior, I, uh, those two so far are uh, the ones I enjoy the most. I will give uh, an honourable mention to the Windwalker Monk though, because that is... <sighs> I hesitate to say better, but I honestly think it might be better in BFA than it is in Legion. They've still got shit tons of cleave. Shards have lost Strike of the Windlord, but that wasn't an interesting ability by any means. You know, he just did some damage. Uh, I'm going to save Bladestorm for the fight, just in case we get some other stuff needed. I'm just trying to whirlwind these down. Like, I'm, I don't really care about padding here or anything. These things have got to die, and then we've got some role players. Just a bit more of an annoyance than anything, just having to deal with these. Okay, so you've got Queen Ashara here. Check out that model. You can see it vaguely on the outline mode. This is the boss that you're going to face in a couple of raids time. And there she goes. I don't have my buff up. Whoops. <laughs> have I been going all this time without battle shout since that first death? Oh dear. Okay, so this boss is kind of interesting. He's got a bit of a mind control effect and uh, something that you need to interrupt. When you get mind controlled, you need to um, you need to run around and collect the blobs. And the blobs are something that you'll notice very shortly. Don't have the interrupt ready, sadly. Yeah, so like like that guy's saying, that's what you're meant to be doing. So here, here come the balls. And now he's going to do Ancient Mindbender, I think? Is the name of the ability? Yeah. And then someone's going to get mind controlled. And it's me. So what I need to do now is run around, collect all these balls. And they need to kill me. So now that all the balls are collected, I'm just going to stand still so on top of the boss so they can cleave the boss and attack me at the same time. And there we go. And that is the entirety of this fight. It's got important mechanics for the mind controlled person. But as long as you do those mechanics, it's quite a simple boss, honestly. I imagine that the person that is mind controlled can actually get affected by tyrannical, however. So maybe the health pool is going to be something that's actually an issue. So, like, when you're actually trying to destroy the mind controlled person. So here, go, here it goes. I'm going to blade storm here just so I can, like, move and damage at the same time a bit. And obviously, it's really powerful. Yeah, so it's, it is quite a simple boss, but it, it's, it's alright. I like I like mind control effects, they're kind of fun. And the next boss has it as well. So we're um, 
we're in our execute phase right now, so we're just spamming execute, and when we've got no more rage left to spend, we try and throw the power in there if we've got it available. Ooh, I got a cloak. It's 325 with leech. Sadly, I have better than that. I've got a 331. The power is not here. Yeah, it does have strength on it as well. And it has crit haste, which I believe are currently the best stats for me. The trail leads deeper into this foul smell. Ah, I'm off caps for some reason. Keep your senses sharp. Oh, what? I was nowhere near that jellyfish. Sharp. Fuck off. Well, he said never mind anyway. It'd be nice if I had um, the artifact fishing rod here, because then I'd be able to turn into a shark and swim really fast. I... For, for live, when you're doing Mythic Plus here, you, it might actually be worth getting to win speed potions. Because this is, does take a little bit of time. Let's place down these motherfuckers. These are actually really dangerous. Um, they do a really nasty dot. As you can see, I've got five stacks of it, probably because I got aggro really easy after the blade storm. Because the paladin can't use... Um, what's it called? Um, consecration, because I'd... Well, he might be able to, actually. I don't know if it goes to the bottom of, this, of the ocean floor or not. Okay, moving on. These things here, the squids and this big guy, need to pay attention to these because they are in, um, they're in the boss fight. So let's get the good old combo going. Sweeping strikes, Colossus smash, and they heal, I believe, for sixty percent of their um, max health when they get that cast off. So you need to focus them down pretty hard. I don't have my instant ready for that one, but I'll have it ready for the next cast. And the big guy, he hits really, really hard. Um, you won't notice it here because this is only a heroic, but um, in higher difficulties, you're probably going to have to kite this guy and let everyone else kill it for you. He does have reduced movement speed as well, which makes kiting that much easier. And now for the boss. So let's pop all our coolies. Sadly, I don't have Colossus Smash ready to line up with Avatar, but... I'll get it soonish. So this guy may despawn during this fight, just as a heads up, because last time I hear that's what was going on. Don't be scared to stand in this, it's only a silence. So if you don't need to actually, you know, casting anything, you're safe to stand in it, it doesn't do damage. And now we get the squids. And we get the big guy for the healer and the tank. Everyone else is dealing with that squid over there, and I've got this one. Probably not the best combination of things. Can these be stunned? Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. Heals the fault. I'm not going to use my Colossus Smash here, because that would be a waste. We'll execute it, though. And then we can go over to here, interrupt him and be on our merry way. So these big pools actually persist for the entirety of the fight, and they do grow about 20 to 50 percent in size over the course of the, the um, spawning size. You can see this one's that size and that one's that size. So you got to be kind of careful. I believe these give um, a buff to the boss or something, so we've got to make sure we kill these. Um, I'll actually hamstring this one, that should help quite a lot. And watch out for the the squid. Oh dear, that's going to get to the boss 100%. Oh, actually, it didn't. It went right past him. That's fortunate. Avatar, Colossus Smash. Let's try and get some damage in before he goes into that mind control phase again. They need to change the graphic for these tentacles that are doing the slam effect. This is a little difficult to see. Grasp for the Sunken City, so we're going into that phase again. So let's find a squid. There's one. Interrupts the last moment. No, nope, the other guy interrupted it, so mine can be the next one. Watch out for the swirly sort of effect on the floor from the squids. We save the Colossus Smash for when we go back to the boss. Come on, execute phase. There we go. Execute, execute, execute. Leap over here. Oh, actually. Hmm. 
Something that I will mention, though it's not affecting me yet, is um, the boss does do a debuff that re makes you unable to be healed for 10 percent. Uh, it's based on your max health and it's 10 percent per stack. So if you've got five stacks, you can't be healed over 50 percent of your max health. If you've got nine stacks, which is I believe is its maximum stack, you can't be healed for um, more than 90 percent of your health. Can I actually cast in my whirlwinds and shit in here? Yeah, I can. I'll sweep in strikes. Oh god, I'm taking loads of damage in it. Fuck. Yeah, the tank didn't really help me out. I was curious, because earlier I never took my damage from that. Yeah, it does actually do damage. Interesting. Maybe it was just in normal where it wasn't damaging me, or it didn't do enough to actually make me realise anything. But, uh... I've got quite bad gear and I'm actually top damage. I'm quite impressed with that. Still got a really shitty 300 weapon from a, like a world quest. Do I get anything? No, of course not. But um, I did mention earlier about deep wounds being really strong. And there's the evidence. 18.5% of my damage was deep wounds. Um, that's because, let me remember, Mortal Strike, Execute, Cleave when you hit three targets, and Blade Storm all apply deep wounds. And you can get to use those abilities pretty often, honestly. And then, obviously, you can do a, just a shit ton of damage in general. Like, the deep wounds with, combined with Colossus Smash, that makes them tick for a lot. Because they actually tick four, if I look at my mastery. Almost 4k per tick over three seconds. It's really strong. And it's a lot of fun. This spec is great. Um, I, like I said, I don't know how it compares to the actual Legion version. But it feels like you've got a button to press in every situation. You know, you've, And um, I'll show you my talents as well. I've taken Anger Management. And the 45 second cooldown of Colossus Smash actually ends up being about 30 seconds with Anger Management. And you can get Blade Storm down pretty low as well, probably less than a minute. In for the kill, really nice during Execute Phase because you get that extra bit of haste. Or just generally in use, you get the 10%. I'm not really that much of a fan of the other two. I mean, you can take this one for a bit more, um, a bit more damage while you're doing... Whirlwind, obviously, because you get that extra bit of slam damage on top and the extra 10%. Deadly Calm is a... I just don't like this. And you've got to bear in mind the global cooldown change means that for every time you press an ability, you won't be able to press anything else for another second and a half. So this is only a 4.5 second cooldown, essentially. Or the, rather, the duration that you can make use of it. So this is really bad. Um, I, I really like Cleave. It's on a really low cooldown, and the fact that it applies deep wounds and does more damage than Whirlwind, it just makes it really nice. And it gives you an extra button to press, which is something that I'll, I'm always a fan of. Warbreaker. This basically gives you the artifact ability. It changes it to an AoE Colossus Smash. But I don't really find it that useful, because Colossus Smash with Anger Management is a 30 second cooldown, so you can't always make the most use out of it. And you've got to bear in mind as well that with Sweeping Strikes, you can always apply Colossus Smash to at least one additional target anyway. So you've, you've always got a way to do two target damage with the extra the extra buff. And you can get some Rage back with Sweeping Strikes if you take this one. Mm, I don't really find that my Rage is that much of a problem. I'm sure I have my Dry Spells, but it's not that bad. I shouldn't be using Second Wind, honestly, in a dungeon. I should probably be using Binding Stride or Defensive Stance. Avatar, I really like Avatar. 20 second duration, 20% increased damage. It, and without this, Arms doesn't actually have a cooldown. Like, Colossus Smash is your big cooldown. So I really like having Avatar just for that extra, extra oomph. And then you've got Rend, which, I mean, it's a nice amount of damage, but... Eh, I guess if you're using it on multiple targets that are going to live... the for the full 12 second duration it'll be a big damage boost but I like Avatar and then Trauma's just Trauma 20% bleed effects and stuff and Stormbolt if you need stuns, Impending Victory if you need heals, Double Time if you need more charges and then War Machine for extra bit of rage Sudden Death if you like Execute procs um, Execute does refund some rage if you don't kill the target you will get 30% of the rage refunded so you can get some rage regeneration with this if you don't get, like the rage generation from this and then Skull Splitter. This is new, and it scales with haste. So I believe that this may be viable later down the line if you've got enough haste to use it fairly often. It, but when your rage generation doesn't become as much of a big deal, it might be quite good. I don't know. 
because then you can get like a best amount of rage and instantly spend it or maybe executes are just going to be the way to go in the end but i feel like you've got a lot of choices with this this uh, spec i'm a big fan of it i really am and then you've you've got utility as well they're the only class that can use battle shout for the 10 percent extra attack power and you got the good old rallying cry so you're uh you're quite desirable there's always going to be at least one warrior in every raid team so that's good news so that was the Shrine of the Storm on the Arms Warrior. Good dungeon, great, great class. Can't say enough good things about both of them. So thanks for watching and goodbye.